Amen. Amen. God is doing something special Amen. in his house. And I don't want to miss a single thing. The first song, there is nothing you cannot do. That is our God. There is absolutely nothing that our God cannot do. And I am glad because this is actually linking with my message today. And the second song, every praise is to our God. Why? Why? Why every praise? Because the Lord is amazing in our lives. He has done amazing things. He is worthy of our praise. Amen. Amen. Now, I just want to introduce my topic today. And I have been battling with the, this title for a long time, but then I felt God wanted me to follow this path. Um, first slide, please. Now, my topic is giant needs, tiny resources. Don't worry. Now, if you look at the pictures there, I'm sure you can see the elephant there, you can see the giraffe, and you can see those little guys somewhere there on the picture. They are standing tall, as tall as they can be. But now, how many times in your life have you found yourself standing and you find yourself, you have actually been dwarfed by the need and the problem that is ahead of you. How many times? I have been there countless times where I look at the need, it looks like there is a giant need before me. And I look at my ability to, to, to cater or to address that need is almost at zero. But what does God say? God says, don't worry. Yes. Yes. Now, one of the things that I'm looking at, if you look at the picture there, it says it's a divine provision. You see the picture of bread. We always pray, our Father who art in heaven, give us our daily bread. We need God is divine providence. God is divine supply. And my pastor was talking here. He says, he is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, just as a way of uh, uh, introducing uh, my topic here, like I said, the two songs that were sung, the first one says, there is nothing impossible with God. Uh, and the, the other thing that we have got to remember is that our God is Jehovah El Shaddai. Now, El Shaddai comes from a Greek word. Uh, the word uh, 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 Shada, it means breast. It brings the picture of a woman uh, breastfeeding the child. Now, the, the Bible says, He is Jehovah El Shaddai. Now, a child needs the milk of the mother is enough for the little born baby. Yeah. And our God is Jehovah El Shaddai, which means He is the all sufficient God, all that we need, all that we can think of, we don't have to search anywhere. The answer is right in front of us in the Bible and God who is in us through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. So, he is Jehovah El Shaddai. Now, I want to start with two questions. Right? Now, when you look at your problem, your problem is a mountain. 
It looks like a huge mountain and it looks like it's insurmountable. It looks like there is nothing you can do to address the problem, right? But now, I want to ask you a question. You remember uh, Jesus taught and said, if you have got faith as big as a mustard seed. Now you can't see clearly there, there is a picture, it's uh, showing the mustard seed. Uh, but I'm, I'm sure if you can click on it, you can uh, enlarge it there. Now, if you've got a faith as big as a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, move, and it will move. Now, when we talk about a mustard seed, now you can see those are seeds. They, they're so small. Can you see that? Yeah. It's the size of the seed of like a, a cabbage. If you know, like you, if you, 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 you plant vegetables, you have got those seeds, vegetable seeds. Now, my question is, how many, how many mustard seeds or cabbage seeds can you put in your pocket? Please, how many? How many in your pocket? How many can you talk to? Billions. Billions in one pocket, isn't it? Millions or billions, I, I don't know. Yes, because they're so tiny. They look so insignificant. But if I can ask you the second question, how many mountains can you put in your pocket? How many mountains can you put in your pocket? None. None. Now, the problem is sometimes when we look at our problems, we try uh, to stand tall and we, 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 we try to grow up to the level of our problems so that we can tackle the problems. Because we look at ourselves, we see ourselves as a, a, a little ant next to the ground, next to the ground, next to the floor. Yeah. And our problem is a giant giraffe, a giant elephant. And we're saying, oh, I wish, let me try and grow, let me try and, uh, uh, you know, level up and, I don't know, what, what is, step up so that I can be an equal match to my problem. You will never be an equal match to your problems. You will never be an equal match to your needs. Your needs will always be standing tall and towering over you. But that does not mean to say your needs are greater than you. Because we worship Jehovah Jireh, the all-sufficient God. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. Jehovah El Shaddai, the all-sufficient God. All we need is to trust our God, to believe in God, and walk in faith, and God is going to perform the miracle that you are looking for. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, all you need is the faith as big as a mustard seed. Now, if you have that faith, your faith doesn't need to match your problem for you to pull your problem down. Yeah. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, New International Version says, you don't have enough faith. Jesus told them, I tell you the truth. If you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, only one mustard seed, you could say to the mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing would be impossible for you. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, I know I'm, 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 I'm just going to uh, get myself into trouble right now, but uh, I mean, I, I, I'll follow what the Holy Spirit is saying in my heart. You know, uh, my heart is about building church. Now, if, if, if ever there is a moment you can have trouble with me, 
is when you do anything that is contrary to the building of the house of God. That's where me and you are going to have problems. Yeah? And uh, I don't mind having that kind of a problem. Now, we are talking about having faith as big as a mustard seed. Now, uh, faith alone cannot work. The Bible says, somebody will say, I have got faith. And somebody will say, I have got works. Now, if I say to you, okay, show me your faith. You have nothing to show, but the person that have got works, they can show you what they have done. So, faith without action is dead faith. Our faith must be accompanied with action. My pastor was talking here about how we purchase this building. This is where we, are, we were facing a giant need. And what happened? Because we trusted God, we were not that many. Not that many. A handful of people. And there was no way, if you were going to put pen and paper, there was no way in which we were going to afford to measure up to buying this building and having this property. It is all because of our trust with the Lord Amen. and our faith. Because we did not say, oh, hallelujah, rabo, shikaraba, sandai, go on with the times. You know, you know, there are times to stop, uh, there are times when you stop speaking in tongues and act. Because we are too spiritual sometimes. No, there are times to be spiritual. There are times to act. There are times to be practical. And get things done. Get things moving. You know, uh, I always talk to uh, my pastors here, uh, Peter and Princess. And uh, I love these guys. And uh, I know they love me. And there is nothing that can happen to me or in my family. If anything happens to me or in my family, I'm telling you, they can sacrifice anything they have to make sure I'm okay. That's, that's them. So, I normally have a chat with them. You know, we, 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 we talk, or we laugh, and uh, sometimes we fight, yes? Yeah? Sometimes we fight in a good way. In a good way, you ask them, they will tell you, we, we are not angels. Hello. Amen. And people think that is, in, is, is, that is impossible. What? You fight with the pastor? Yes, we do. Because we talk about things. Hello. We talk about things because their heart is to build the work of God. And we talk about building the work of God. So one time I was talking to my pastor, and we were uh, talking about the purchasing of this building. And they were saying, how is it going to be possible? And you know, these guys, I mean, I'm, I know I will be in trouble. <laughs> Definitely I know. But I, I, I have to say this. Now, these guys, you know what they say? They say, uh, Brother Vincent, you know what? We will try everything we can. But if, if nothing works, you know what? We have got a house. We have got a house. We are ready to sacrifice our house, even when it means for us to go and rent a two-bedroom house with a kitchen. We will go there, me and my family, they, both of them, we will go and rent and make sure the people of God have got a roof above their head. Now, you don't know this. You will, there is no way in which you will know it, but it's just not me getting myself into trouble. But this is... Now, why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because uh, the leadership of the church, they are working on the ground, and there are many things that are happening that you will never even know about. And it will look like everything is silent, nothing is happening, but there is a lot of work happening. You know, when you see a duck, a duck, you know, 
just going gracefully on the water. It, it moves so nice and smooth. But those who have studied the ducks, they will tell you, while you see it moving nicely and slowly, down at the bottom, there is heavy paddling that is happening. So, I want to say, Church of God, let us support this man and this woman of God with everything that we can lay our hands on. Let us be a, a blessing to them, not a burden. A lot of churches, pastors, pastors are burnt out. Pastors give up congregations. Do you know? Because the congregation decides to be a burden rather than a blessing. And these guys, they are only human. Expect some mistakes from them. They are only human. But God wants us to support them. But now, when God says, don't worry, God doesn't say, sit down and warm your chair. No. God says, stand up, do the bit that you can do, and I will take care of the rest. Use what you have. My pastors here, they were ready to use what they have. All what they had was the house. They were ready, and God, thank God, God did not allow them to go down that route. And thank God for this church that is so honest, that is so faithful, that we do not allow the pastors to go down that route. Amen. Can we clap hands to the church of God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, our God is a God of multiplication. If you look at, like, uh, uh, in Genesis, God says, multiply to Adam. Replenish the earth. God is a God of multiplication. In Acts, the Bible says that uh, uh, the Lord added to the church those who were to be saved. The last time I checked, uh, multiplication is actually continuous addition. Am I right? Now, how can God meet big needs with zero resources? Now, use what you have. But sometimes God will meet your needs with absolutely zero resources. How does that happen? There is a story that is told about the five lepers uh, in the book of Kings, chapter uh, 7, verse 3 to 20. I'm not going to read the story. But the story says there were five lepers, the flesh just falling off and, and, and the weak and frail. Now, they were out there. They had nothing in terms of resources. They didn't have anything that they called their own except their breath that God had given them. And these lepers, uh, they were out there and they were hungry in the city the Bible says there was hunger, there was a famine in such a way that uh, even the head of a donkey was very expensive. It was a famine that people actually resorted even to eat donkeys. And if, if you would be able to afford to buy a head of a donkey, you will go there home jovial and happy because that would be a jackpot for you, a head of a donkey. That's how serious it was. And the lepers were dying with hunger out there. And they spoke to them, themselves. And they said, look, we are hungry and we are dying. Now, in the city there is famine. If what, where can we go? And there was the Assyrian army that was actually camped there. The army of the Syrian coming to attack the people of God, they had all the food. 
and then they decided if we go to the city we will die of hunger with the population in the city if we go to the Assyrian army they will kill us but what point is it that we stay here we better go what if they spare us and they went now you see they took action and God did something amazing the Bible says God turned the five lepers as they were walking and their feet produced the sound of a mighty army coming towards the Assyrian camp and the Assyrian they heard the sound and said wow the Israelites they have mobilized they have hired other nations to come and join them to fight against us let us flee they left all the food and they all ran now imagine God is turning lepers yes. frail and fragile dying flesh falling away but God turns them to sound like a a mighty army. How many times do you look at yourself, you find yourself like you are just as frail as these lepers. You are just as helpless as like no one is business. But you know, take action. Yes. Take the right action, the necessary action, and leave everything to God. God turned the lepers into a, sounding like a, a battalion, a mighty army moving. Amen. Now the Bible says they went into the, into the Assyrian camp and it was deserted. They took all the spoil, all the food. And this is what they said. This is what they said. They said, look, if we keep quiet and stay here, we are sinning against God. People are dying out there in the city. Yeah. We better carry the tidings to the city and tell the king. Now, here is the problem with human nature. Me, I, myself, you know, we always look at ourselves. We never think about other people. We never think about God's people, anybody. Even if when it comes to business, business, whatsoever ideas you have, you want to have that monopoly. You know, this, this is the mentality of the, the world. You, 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 you pull down your competitors so that you stand out. But the kingdom of God doesn't work that way. As the children of God, our aim is not to be ahead of others. Our aim is to ahead ourselves. Do you see the difference there? Being ahead of others and aheading ourselves. That means no one is left behind. We are going together. If I need to stop and support you to come to a certain level where you need to be to be in order to be able to progress with what you are doing i should have that heart to be able to say okay i will put all my things down and i need to say come on where are we where do we start from where are we going we move together support one another now this church is blessed we have got people with talents we have got people with a, a professions we have people with everything and all what we have let us be wise let's tap into all the resources that we have in the house and ahead ourselves amen amen Amen. Amen. Now, so here are the lepers. They didn't have anything. They had zero resources. Because normally, God's principles, when God is going to give you a miracle or provide, God expects you 
to give or to produce what you have. Because he asked Moses, Moses, what do you have? Moses had a, a, a piece of wood that seemingly was just useless and insignificant. He had nothing. And just cast it down. He cast it down, it became a snake, and he picked it up with it by the tail. And that became the rod of his authority that would allow him to uh, uh, help or deliver the children of God Amen. from the hand of the Egyptians. So sometimes the things that we have, they look so insignificant. They don't look like they can do the job. They don't look like they can help us anyhow. But let us not underestimate the power of Likli. Because Likli is plenty in God's hands. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. All what we need to do, uh, we must be ready to open our hands. Yeah. Open our hands. You know, when I grew up, I remember when I was in primary school, we had a book, it was a, a very funny book, it had, but it had a, a story of a monkey that came uh, and the monkey uh, uh, was actually stealing some groundnuts. And now, uh, I, I'm sure people like Anjin can remember that story. And, you know, and then uh, the, the, the farmer decided, he roasted the nuts so that they would you know, have that kind of uh, a, a, a scent, you know, that attracts, and put them in a, in a tin. Now, in that tin, you can actually put your head inside the tin. So the monkey came, put the head, dipped the head in the tin, and now wanted to grab all the nuts inside and made a fist to grab now, because his, the fist is made, the hand cannot come out. And now, the farmer had to come and found the monkey still holding and it, it was trapped. All what the monkey had to do was to release <laughs> and go, but was caught. You know, some of us, we are grabbers and hoarders. God wants you to release something and you are busy hoarding on it. Now, God wants to give you something. Tell me, where is God going to bless his blessing? Your hands are full. God is not going to bless. Your hands are full. Open up. Amen. Let God bless you. Amen. Build the house of God. God will build your family. God will build your marriage. God will build your children. God will sort out the relationships that are sour in your family. Amen. Amen. There is nothing that our God cannot do. Amen. We have got a lot of biblical examples uh, where God has been able to meet a big needs with little resources. For example, you remember the story of uh, Elijah and the widow at Zarephath? Yeah? I don't want to go into the details of the story. You remember the story about Elisha uh, multiplying the widow's oil? Hello? Yes? yes? You remember the feeding of the 5,000 yes. men? They were women and children. In the Jewish culture, uh, they counted men, and women were not included. Obviously, if there are 5,000 men, my guess would be women would be, uh, and children would be three times more than that number. Yeah? And also, you remember Elijah and the ravens. When Elijah was sitting by the brook, and the birds, the ravens came bringing some meat and dropping meat. You are sitting uh, at the, uh, you know, this, 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 this well always is at Corinth. Yeah? It's at the brook here. 
Now, in this brook, drinking water, and there were some supplies coming. He didn't even know where that meat was coming from. The rabbis came and they dropped the meat, and he was able to eat. Now, you have a big need. You don't know what you are going to do. You have no answer. I want to tell you, my brother, my sister, don't worry. Ravens are coming. Ravens are coming your way. They will drop your answer in the time when you have no idea. All you need, position yourself before God. Be everything that God wants you to be. That's all you have to do. Love people. Support people. Build the house of God. Forget the rest. God will take care of the rest. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, <coughs> if we look at the story of Elijah and the widow at Zarephath, uh, Elijah said, Go and make me some bread. He saw this widow was uh, busy gathering some sticks to go and cook. And the widow says, uh, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour and a jar and a jar and a little oil in a jar. I am gathering sticks to, to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat and die. <coughs> Can you imagine? This is a person that had lost all hope and they are ready to eat their last meal and wait for death. But God came in. If God can come in for somebody who is eating their last meal, ready to die, and God comes in, and God can come through for you. Amen. Now, it says here, uh, then the man of God instructed, says, but first make a small loaf of bread for me. Now, I'm telling you, I'm left with little for me to eat and die. So now you want me to die earlier than my time because you want me to prepare food for you. You want me to share the little that I have that is ready, that can give us a, a bit of more hours of life before we die of hunger. And you are asking me to share the man of God, go and do this for me first. Then think about yourself and your son later. And the Bible says the, the woman actually uh, obeyed and the man of God says uh, for this is what the Lord says. Take this message. The God of Israel says the jar of flour will not be used up and the jar of oil will yeah. not run dry. Yeah. Come on. This is your last meal. This is your last meal. I've always been testifying, I told you, you remember, that my car was stolen. Yeah? God can meet big needs with little or no resources. I didn't have money to buy a car. I didn't. But God spoke to somebody. Somebody who did not want to stay like this, who said, okay, God, I have my car. This one, I can release it. Brother Vince is walking. He needs a car. Hello. Yeah. And you know, I told you the testimony that I even prayed to God. I said, God, I don't worry, I worry about walking. If you want me to walk, I will walk. If you want me to not to walk and drive, you, God, will replace the car because you are Jehovah El Shaddai, Amen. the all-sufficient God. And God replaced my car and even gave me the version of a car that I never thought I would drive. It's so comfortable, so nice, and it's right-fitting for a 60-year 60, 60 year young boy like me. 
Back then. Kenny always asked me, say, oh, how, how is the machine doing? I said, oh, the machine is, is powerful. He said, well, these ones don't lose their comfort, you know? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Praise God. Am I, am I touching somebody here? Yes. Is God speaking to somebody here? Yes. So, and what happened? She went away and did as the man of God had told her. Princess, Pastor Princess says, shh, shh, just do it. Stop questioning. We ask, we open our mouth too wide sometimes. We talk too much. Too much talking. Stop talking. Hello? <coughs> Shh. Just do it. Here's the woman. She had, this is my last meal. Go and cook for me. I'm a man of God. Cook for me. Okay. Shh. I'll do it. She just did it. And then it says, for the jar of flour was not used up and the jar of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm getting excited. God is amazing. And if you look at the story of Elisha, uh, the story of Elisha multiplying the widow's oil, and this, uh, it, 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 it says that uh, when, when, when Elisha asked this, this woman, a widow, and says, give me some food, Elisha said, tell me, what do you have? He said, oh, I have nothing at all except a flask of olive oil, a flask. I have nothing. I'm just a flask of olive oil. I have nothing. And then the man of God says to her, okay, go and borrow containers. They went and they brought as many containers as they, they could. So she did as she was told. Shh. Just do it. Just do it. Her sons kept bringing the jars, uh, bring more jars, the woman said, and then the son, the son says, there aren't any more. You see, God is ready to bless you above and beyond your capacity yes. to carry his blessing. Yes. That is what the Bible says. Because God does not want to bless you for you and your family. God wants a spill over. God wants to bless you and your family so that you will have enough to bless other people. Amen. Amen. And then he says, and then the olive oil stopped. Because the woman and the, and, and, and the children, they no longer had any capacity to carry that. Amen. Then it stopped. And it says, when she told the man of God what had happened, he said to her, now, now sell the oil and pay your debts. And you and your sons shall live on what is left over. Glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The feeding of the 5,000, and probably that would be my last story. Feeding of the 5,000. Uh, this is the only, the only account that is recorded in all the four Gospels. Yeah? And that means it is very, very, very important. That's the only miracle found in all these Gospels. Jesus is tired. Jesus wants to get some rest. If you can look at, uh, at the scripture, you have the scripture there. 
uh, as soon as Jesus heard the news, he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone, but the crowd heard where he was headed to and followed on foot from many towns, not one, many towns, and now, when they came, Jesus was healing the sick and doing everything. And then there was a time where the disciples went to Jesus and said, Master, tell these people to go back home or go to the nearby villages and buy food because they're going to die of hunger. And then Jesus said, they said, send the crowd away. And then Jesus said, no, no, no. That isn't necessary. You feed them. You feed them. Yeah. Now, you know sometimes when, when we read some of these scriptures, we need to pause and think. Because many a times we want to avoid a need. We want to find a safe passage out of the need so that, well, it has nothing to do with us. But Jesus says, you feed them. And then, but we have only five loaves of bread and two fish. They answered, what, did God, what does God expect from you? God says, use what you have. Yes. Don't try saying, oh, I want, I'm trying to get a, uh, until I accumulate, until I'm there, then. No, it will never happen. Use what you have and trust God for the rest of the journey. Right? And then it says that, uh, Bring them here. You see, I like it. They, 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 there was a little boy with those, uh, that lunch. And when he says five loaves, people are thinking of a loaf of bread. No, it was not. It was like a little round uh, uh, bun, like, you know, small, like that. It's very small. Yeah, you can Google it if you want to find out the kind of bread when you say a loaf, what it was. Small. Looking round, it was enough for the boys' lunch. Yeah, and two fish. And what they did, they took that and they brought it to Jesus. Listen, what you have, you can choose to keep it to yourself, or you can choose to lay it at the feet of Jesus. If you lay it at the feet of Jesus, yeah. there is going to be a difference. If you choose to keep it, there is fine. It's fine, no problem. Keep it. You will keep your five loaves, and that will be your five loaves you keep. And it is said that they brought it to Jesus. And the other thing says, Jesus looked up, which means Jesus actually prayed. Yeah? And bless them. And then, what did Jesus do? He started breaking the bread. Now, uh, sometimes when you look at the movies, you see like Jesus is lifting, and then suddenly there is a multiplication, and you see bread like that. That is not how the miracle actually happened. Jesus broke the bread. The miracle was on the step-by-step -step breaking of the bread. Don't try and wait for a finished product. Get along with what you have and keep moving. Thus God is doing and, and, and making your miracle. He started breaking, 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 breaking. And as he was breaking, breaking, you know, uh, the basket got full and he still continued breaking, breaking. And then the, 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 the second thing again, there was action here. Jesus is acting, breaking. 
The second, the next thing was uh, Jesus actually gave the baskets to the disciples. He instructed the disciples to make people sit in groups of fifties. Now, you know, I, I don't know where people get this idea that uh, the house of God is like, it's a free Mandela, you know, you, you can just walk in, walk out, walk in, back door, front door, do what you like. No. God is a God of order. God has got governance that needs to be followed in the house. There must be order. Right? And even when we talk about the gifts of the Spirit, the Bible says, when you operate in these gifts of the Spirit, let there be order, so that these gifts will profit the church, the house. There is order. So, that's why we have got the connect groups. Connect group. Connect group. Connect group. Make them sit in groups of 50s. That means there is some kind of organization. You see the music here. You see here they are playing, they are blessing us. Now, this does not just happen. Somebody has got to sacrifice and come here on a, a, a Saturday evening or at some point and, and organize and uh, behind scene and do things. And there is order in the house of God. That's how God wants his church to be run. There must be order in the house of God. If you disturb the order in the house of God, you are actually kicking against the prickles. You are fighting against God. Because, the, you know, there are some people that just want trouble. Yeah. Want trouble. I watch sometimes the Nigerian uh, films, you know, and I enjoy them. So, Oh, you, don't, you don't want trouble, trouble, you hear that? Some people just want trouble. I'm telling you, honest, I'm, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not prophesying, I'm telling you, for a fact, some people just want trouble. And you can ask me, how do you know? Many moons ago, me and some of my brothers here, like, uh, Brother Martin, we have been involved in building the work of God somewhere. And if you want me, you want to know why do I know that some people just look for trouble? I know because I know. Because I've been there, because I've seen it, because I've experienced it. Let it not be you who is going to be there just to want trouble or just for an argument's sake. Or some people like to be winners, you know. Even if when my point doesn't hold water, I must push it through I, until I win. Because if I don't, then I've given in. Let us build the house of God in accordance with what God has blessed before us and the footprints and the pegs and the boundaries and the marks that God has put in the house. Now, can you imagine if in this church we decide, so, okay, this is a free Mandela church, everybody do what you like, go on, come in, do this, do that. What will happen of this house? It will come tumbling and folding away. So, let's maintain the order of the house of God. Amen. Amen. Now, it says here, uh, now, the disciples, they started distributing. You see, Jesus could have just multiplied and the people come and pick. But Jesus actually has ordered. He gave the disciples, he gave them a mandate, he gave them a task. And the disciples, they had a task 
to go around and distribute accordingly. So here we see that uh, the disciples became a channel of God's blessing. If we look at the key themes, there are at least about uh, four key themes uh, in the feeding of the 5,000. Uh, one, the divine provision and abundance. Secondly, we see the theme of Jesus Christ as the bread of life, that in him we get all what we need. He is El Shaddai, the all-sufficient God. And also we, we see faith and dependence on God, and we see the call to trust God. The disciples, they said, how can we feed the crowd? We only have got five loaves. Now, they had to entirely depend on the word of Jesus and what uh, Jesus uh, actually said. Now, as I close today, I want to bring your attention to the 10 lessons that we learn from the feeding of the 5,000. Number one, Jesus' compassion is directed towards you. He knows what you are going through and he is ready to step in and help you. Number two, don't be put off or be discouraged by your desert experiences. When nothing is happening and you feel like the whole world has collapsed upon you, don't worry about that uh, because the Lord is there for you. Number three, don't try to get rid of the problem because the disciples said to Jesus, send the people away because they, 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 they didn't want to carry the burden and the responsibility. But Jesus says, no, that's not necessary. You give the people food to eat. So, don't actually try to avoid the problem. And also, number four, don't be put off by your calculations. I know that your ca calculations may be accurate, they might be correct, but your calculations, they are different from God's calculations. God's mathematics is totally a different game from our own mathematics. Number five, we have got also to remember that little is much, it is abundance in God's hand. Let us stop asking questions. Let us trust and just do it. Like Pastor Princess preached, the other day, shh, just do it. Number uh, six, bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Now, you can choose to bring things to the feet of Jesus or you could choose to handle things by yourself. Now, if you keep your bread, you will keep your five loaves and your two fish. But if you bring everything at the feet of Jesus, you expect a miracle of God, a bona fide miracle of God that can feed 5,000 men. And now when we say 5,000, there were women and children, uh, and the, the last time I checked, the women and children could have tripled the number. Maybe it was over 15,000 people that were fed here. Number seven, a prayer of faith unleashes God's divine providence. Jesus lifted the bread and the fish unto God and he prayed. So always pray a prayer of faith. You need faith as small as a mustard seed to move mountains. Point number eight, be prepared to be a channel of God's blessing. Jesus uses other people to bless other people. So don't be a hoarder like a monkey that actually uh, dipped its hand on the tin of, uh, uh, of the nuts and once it made the feast it could not get it out until it was caught. All what it could have done, it would have just released the hand and just let go. So if we keep hoarding like this, God has no way to bless us because our hands are full. So we need to release what we have and let God bless us abundantly. Create space for God to bless us. Number nine, 
God is not an author of confusion. I've already said that, but there was order in the house. People were said to stay in groups of 50s and uh, the disciples had to, 12 disciples had to minister to the needs of the crowd. There was order in it. Everything was done. Like we do here in church, praise and worship, everything. There is order. Somebody sacrifices to come here on Saturday evening to organize, to get ready uh, and prepare. So there is always an order in the house of the Lord. Now, uh, number 10, the last part is, God expects us all to be good stewards and not to be engrossed in our excesses. Now, when the people were well fed and everybody was satisfied, the Bible says 12 baskets of leftovers were actually collected. God doesn't want us to waste his resources. We must be good stewards of the resources of God. Whatever God gives us, we need to look after it. Now, I just want to, uh, to, 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 to close. As I close, I want you to know, do not settle for the resources. Seek for the origin. If God has you, then you have him, and all the divine providence is yours. There is also nothing impossible to God. Now, as I close, I want you to remember to strike a balance here. Uh, Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 says, Even though the fig tree has no blossoms, and there are no grapes on the vine, even though the olive crops fail, and the fields lies empty and barren, even though the flock die in the field, and the cattle barns are empty, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes me as a sure-footed, as a deer, able to tread upon the heights. So we need to strike a balance. We worship God not because he blesses us, not because he, he causes us to stand out or to, to meet our giant needs. We worship him because he is God. And like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they say, even though he doesn't save us from the fire, we still will worship him. We shall not bow down before the idols. And it shall be known that we refuse to bow down to the idols. Thank you very much. May the Lord bless you. We are going to end here and I'm going to ask the praise and worship team to come forward and finish uh, with a powerful song of praise. Amen.